So by now many of you have probably seen the apocalyptic footage coming out of the United States as large portions of America burn to the ground and the skylines of major cities turn a dark, eerie shade of orange in the middle of the day. But I'm not making this video to terrify you any more than you already should be about the fact that large portions of America and large portions of the planet that you live on are on fire right now. I'm making this video to talk to you about what you can do about it. And there's a lot we could do, but we need to move fast. Now, first of all, why is America on fire? Is it because of gender reveal parties gone wild? Well, actually, yeah, some of it is because of that. But if this had happened and then it had rained later that day, it would never have made the news and it would have never have burned thousands of square miles of forest. The reason America is burning is the same reason that large portions of this planet are burning. And that's because this earth is overheating. And when you have a hot and dry forest, you essentially have a matchbox, a gunpowder keg, and all it takes is a lightning strike or a careless person throwing another gender reveal party with explosives. And then you have San Francisco turning orange in the middle of the day. Okay, so what do we do about it? Now there's two massive things that we can do about it, but I know my audience. I know that a large percentage of you are already vegan, already plant-based. And while it's true that animal agriculture is the cause of approximately 15% of global greenhouse gas emissions, which is by the way, more than every car, truck, plane, and ship in the world combined, there's still the other 85% of emissions, which come from exactly what you'd expect it to, burning fossil fuels. And that 85%, unlike making a decision at the supermarket to eat animals or to eat plant-based meat, you can't, we can't change that other 85% with simple personal choices. While the average person can do simple, basic, obvious things like turn the lights off when you're not in the room, the average person can't make a decision as to whether that electricity is coming from a coal power plant or from renewable energy. Making those kinds of mass scale collective changes takes mass scale collective action, AKA politics. But make no mistake about it, animal rights and veganism are 1000% political issues. Veganism is not a diet. Veganism is a way of life based around causing the minimal harm to animals as is practically possible. Basically not killing when you don't have to. And for the same reason that vegans don't wear fur coats and if vegans who are conscious of this check where their makeup, their soap, their shampoo comes from to make sure it wasn't tested on animals, just like the decisions you make at the supermarket affect animals, the decisions you make at the ballot box affect billions of animals. Just like most vegans I know, most animal rights groups I know, including myself, have made the decision to speak out in favor of the Black Lives Matter movement, even though it's controversial because people's lives are on the line and it matters. Well, guess what? Thousands of people and disproportionately higher numbers of black and brown people have their lives on the line, along with billions of animals who have their lives on the line in this upcoming election. So how is the animal rights movement gonna stay silent on it? You tell me if that makes any sense. Okay, so the next president of the United States is either gonna be Donald Trump or Joe Biden. Where does prominent conspiracy theorist and current president of the United States, Donald Trump, stand on the climate emergency? That science is gonna be key, because if we, if we ignore that science and sort of put our head in the sand and think it's all about vegetation management, we're not going to succeed together protecting Californians. Okay, it'll start getting cooler. <laughs> I you wish- just, You just watch. I wish science agreed with you. <laughs> Hey, well, I don't think science knows, actually. What the f are you talking about? Science does know, you raging ignoramus. You just don't know because you're not paying any attention to your intelligence briefings, you clown. Even children understand this because it's dead simple. This is not like quantum theory or string theory or the question of what the hell are those unidentified aerial phenomenon that keep being tracked by the US and other world militaries? And where do they come from? Science doesn't know the answers to those questions. Science does know the answer to this because it's dead simple. When you burn billions of tons of greenhouse gases, you increase the greenhouse effect. The temperature goes up, capiche, that's it. So seeing as Trump has been willfully ignorant on this issue, we shouldn't be surprised at all that he's had murderously destructive policies as far as toxic pollution and climate crisis. I'm gonna get into those in a second, but what about Joe Biden? If I talk about Joe Biden's climate platform, a lot of people can say, well, I don't believe you. He's just a politician. So let's talk about Joe Biden's climate record. Now, first of all, Biden, along with Bernie Sanders, who are still working together on this issue, was one of the first politicians to raise the alarm and to take action on climate change all the way back in 1986, when almost nobody had even heard of this. As a senator, his voting record on the issue from the League of Conservation Voters that tracks your performance on environmental issues is an A. As vice president, the Obama-Biden administration signed into effect the biggest cuts in greenhouse gases and toxic air pollution in human history. 
cuts that were completely canceled and undone by so-called President Trump. Now, because of his record, Joe Biden's climate platform is completely believable. So what is his climate platform? Really, it's Bernie Sanders' climate platform that came about through hard work and negotiations with the Bernie Sanders team. And it involves spending $2 trillion on dealing with the climate emergency head on, on eliminating the use of fossil fuels from electricity generation in the United States, getting America going electric as fast as is humanly possible, and a million other actions I urge you to check out in his platform. But greenhouse gas emissions are only part of the equation. Protecting wilderness and protecting nature is absolutely crucial for the extinction crisis and for reversing the climate emergency. What's the Obama-Biden administration's record on that front? Let me give you one example. On just one day, with one stroke of the pen, the last legitimately elected president of the United States, Barack Obama, created a marine sanctuary in the Pacific Ocean the size of Texas, California, New York State, Florida, Massachusetts, Vermont, and New Jersey combined. And because he banned oil extraction, mining, and industrial fishing inside the sanctuary, it is no exaggeration to say that that one single act saved the lives of billions of animals, including endangered whales and dolphins and species we haven't even discovered yet and didn't even know existed. And that was just one single signature, but it was part of democratic actions that led to the protection of earth and ocean and all the wild animals that live within them, equivalent to the size of all of Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Sweden, and the United Kingdom combined. And that's on top of hundreds of other actions, like making the biggest cuts in cancer causing, birth defect causing, climate destroying, mass extinction inducing greenhouse gases and toxic air pollution in human history. Truly monumental progress that that orange moron is working on murdering every single day that that criminal still lives in the White House. And Mike Pence will be no different. Oh, but, but both political parties are the same, right? And that's why when Biden says he wants to protect one third of all of the land and oceans of the United States, something he doesn't need the Senate or Congress to do, something he can do unilaterally as president of the United States. If you put him in the Oval Office, I do believe him, but he's only gonna be able to accomplish that. He's only gonna be able to make that difference if he becomes president. So the only thing that matters right now, before I continue with this video, is that we get it to people who live in the battleground states that will decide the future of the United States and to a large degree, the future of the planet. So here's a list of those battleground states. And here's a list of the battleground Senate races that will determine whether Joe Biden has that $2 trillion at his disposal to deal with the climate emergency. If you don't live in the United States, tag your friends and family who do live in the United States. If you don't have any friends and family in the United States, still leave a comment and give this video a thumbs up. That will increase the amount of people who see it. If you'd like to use your own social media platforms to raise awareness on these issues, you could help out with what I'm calling the Animals Against Trump campaign by not just sharing this video, but by uploading a picture or a video of yourself with some of your animal friends and explaining in the caption or explaining in the video why it is that the presidential election is gonna impact animals. If you need more information on that, check the article, check the main video, and hashtag whatever you do, animals against Trump. Okay, now how does what we eat affect the climate emergency? Now, as I mentioned before, animal agriculture is responsible for more greenhouse gas emissions than the entire transportation sector combined. It is the number one cause of ocean dead zones, of water consumption, of water pollution, the number one cause of habitat destruction and mass extinction. But let's not just talk about the bad news. Let's talk about the good news about switching to a plant-based diet. As I mentioned recently in a video dedicated to Bernie Sanders and all progressives trying to make this world a better place, a worldwide shift from animal to plant-based foods would free up 75% of all the space currently being taken up by the human race to regenerate into nature. That's the equivalent to the land area of the entire United States and China and Australia and the European Union combined. The rebirth of that many forests, savannas, wetlands, and prairies wouldn't just be a miracle for endangered species who are currently headed for extinction. It would be a miracle for our species, particularly American people, 
millions of whom live in the 40 plus cities that will be partially or fully under the ocean by the end of the century if we don't stop the burning and melting of our planet. And maybe surviving into the Star Trek era. Bet we won't have to wait a year for a vaccine yet. If you're looking for some help and advice in switching to a plant-based diet, you can go to thegamechangers.com or watch The Game Changers if you haven't already for excellent nutritional and excellent meal advice. If you'd like one-on-one -on -one guidance from certified nutritionists for free, you can check out Challenge 22. I'm gonna put a link in my bio. And if you agree with this message and you'd like to help amplify it, be sure to connect with me on my main platform on Instagram. I'm going to be sharing content every day between now and the election around these issues. If you'd like some animal rights themed music for your phone, for your Spotify playlist, um, or if you'd like some workout songs or some chill songs, uh, you could connect with me on Spotify. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to spread the word and please make sure you are registered to vote this year. Thank you.